And this is a question that only you can answer for yourself. Have you given him, what place have you given him in, 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 your, in your soul, in your life, in your walk with him? Have you given him a preferred place? Have you given him a prominent place? Yes. Or have you given him the preeminent place? Do you ever hear what I said? Yes. yes. A preferred place or a prominent place, or a preeminent. Let us allow the our court, let that represent a preferred place. And the holy place, let's let that represent a prominent place. And the holy of holies, let's let that represent a preeminent place. Yeah. Come on now. Uh -huh. These will, for our purposes, signify the different levels of sanctification. Uh -huh. Even though we are all equally justified, we are not all equally sanctified. Some have given Jesus a preferred place in their life. Yes. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Some have given Jesus a prominent place in their lives. Yes. And still others have given him the preeminent place in their yes. with the preferred place. These are the out of court Christians. Oh. Come on, somebody. Come on. Now the word, now don't one thing you better recognize too. All of them are saved. Uh -huh. Okay? Now the word preferred means to put something, to put before something or some or someone. Uh, like I prefer this rather than that. Uh -huh. uh, you understand what I'm saying? It means that these out of court Christians have entered in through the gate. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? The out of court stands for separation. It means that a soul for whom Christ died has come out of the world and entered into the gate into the fellowship of redemption. Stop at the altar of sacrifice, signifying his salvation by the blood. He's washed at the laver of regeneration. In other words, he's tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And they've decided to follow Jesus. Right. That's an out-of-court Christian. They've come out from among them. And they prefer Jesus above all that the world has to offer. Come on now. But the problem here, now here's the problem with the outer court Christian, is that they spend all their days in the outer court. Oh, help me somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. As if deliverance from past guilt and regeneration were all that God has for them. Listen, the gift of salvation does promise much as far as the future is concerned. We are delivered from the wrath to come. We are preserved in Christ Jesus. We will be glorified with the saints in the kingdom of God. But saints of God, hear me now, our salvation not only promises what to look forward to in the by and by, like she said, but right now we have eternal blessings that we can claim as our own. Amen. Right now, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. Right now, there is therefore now no condemnation. Yes. Right now, we are more than conquerors. Yes. Right now, we are washed, we are sanctified, we are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. It is good to come out of the world into the fellowship of the saints in the outer court, but that's not the end, but the beginning. Yes. The prominent Amen. place Christian understands that he must have a personal, intimate, daily relation with the Lord. And don't forget that whenever we read about a priest ministering in the holy place, it is said in the Bible that what he did was done before God or before the Lord. Yes. In the holy place, yes. the saint is truly grateful for what the Lord has done already. Yes. But he desires more. He, he hungers and he thirsts for all that the Lord has talked about saints who have given Jesus a preferred place in their daily lives. Also, we've considered those servants of the Lord who have given him a prominent place in their lives and hearts. But there's more. And the good thing about this is that only you know where you are in the Lord. There's one more. Because there are still others, you know who you are, who give Jesus our Lord and Savior the preeminent place in every phase of their life. They are the ones who in all ways acknowledge him so that he can direct that path, that path. Now the word preeminent means, and this is, this is good, that which is superior and above all others. Hmm. 
Uh, somebody said that God has given him a name, which is above every name. Yes. It means outstanding and having no evils. It means greatest and important and one who leads the way. That's what preeminent means. Now in Colossians, we're going to finish it up with Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 through 18. Colossians 1, it says, and this is the reason why he must have the preeminent place too. It says, in whom we have redemption yes. through his blood, yes. even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, those are earthly thrones, by the way, or dominions, the word for dominions is studios, it means a, like a landlord or someone you pay rent to, or whether they be principalities, principalities, principalities simply mean uh, first in command, you know, like you have a, a group of soldiers and a general come in and everybody pay them, that's what principalities are, or even powers, it says powers, or powers, or what they should see, they should see it means delegated authority, but it doesn't matter. Either one of these, strong, dominion, the power, the power, all things were created for, by him and for him. And he is the head, and, 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 and he is the head of, and he is before all things. By him all things consist. Who is the beginning, the first one from the dead, listen now, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Glory to God. That's the last one. You got to let him have the preeminence in your heart. Amen. The first place is great. How many places are great? Jesus has got to have the preeminent place in your heart. Glory to God.